What's going on, everybody? In today's video, we are going to be talking about the new trust test that the FAA recently announced. This is a test that recreational pilots will need to pass if they want to be able to fly their drone. Let's get started. What's going on, everybody? Ken here. You're watching Original Dobo. Today, we're going to be discussing trust. Now, I don't have all the details and information, but I have Greg from the Pilot Institute who does and Pilot Institute is actually on the administrator list to be able to, I guess, present a test. Greg, how does that actually work? Uh, yeah, Ken, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, the trust, uh, we have a platform for it. So we created a platform uh, just like the other providers that the FAA selected. And uh, based on that, you can basically go on this website, trust.pilotinstitute.com, very simple create your login, takes a few minutes, and then and then you're good to do the training. You know, I, I kind of hate that the FA called it a test. It's not really, there is a test in there, but it's really about training. Uh, the bottom line is the FA wants people to be uh, knowledgeable about the rules to fly your drone. Gotcha, gotcha. So this, this well, and, and, and like you said, we hate to call it a test, but this class that you have to take to be able to fly, this was recently just launched just not too long ago, right? And before that, we didn't have any sort of, I guess, competency test or, you know, training that recreational pilots had to had to take. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Tuesday was actually the day the FA announced it, uh, end of the day on the East Coast. And um, it, it's been a requirement. It's been interesting because uh, in 2018, Congress basically told the FA, hey, you, you have to implement these new rules. Uh, and then this is when we got USC 44809, which is technically where all the regulation for recreational flyers lives. And part of this was a list of nine different items. And, uh, and the FA put a bunch of them in place immediately because they were pretty simple. But they mm -hmm. had a few ticket items that they had to complete. And one of them was the trust exam. There's still one ticket item that's not completed in that list. It's the, the community-based organization, the CBOs. Uh, the FA still has to basically talk and, and uh, sit down and talk with uh, the community-based organizations and get them their, their go-ahead. And then once we have that, then you'll be able to pick uh, a CBO uh, guidelines. So let's say you went with flight test, for example. Flight test uh, is gonna more than likely going to become a CBO. And then you can follow their, their guidelines and then and fly your drone using that. Okay, so I have questions because I'll be, I'll be completely real. When I saw this, it sort of caught me off guard. And I know there's a lot of people that have questions. So is there a cost to the test? No, no cost, all free. No cost at all, okay. No. So they log into Pilot Institute, they're able to take this test, it doesn't cost them anything. That's correct, yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, okay. and it's, it's fast, it's, it's like 15 minutes to take the test. Most people say they do it in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so and for obviously pilots that have already been flying recreationally, this should be a pretty easy test for them to take. Yeah, yeah, and you can't fail. That's even better. Uh, when you take the, there's four quizzes throughout the training. Uh, they're very short. I think there's 23 questions total in the entire test. Once you've completed all four quizzes, then we give you your certificate and you're good to go. But every time you take one of these questions, uh, you're gonna click on the button that says check answer. And then, and if you get it wrong, we're gonna say, hey, you know what? Try again. Read the question again. We give you a little bit of feedback, and then you pass. So you can't really fail the test. So I got to ask, how are, how are new pilots, people that are just buying a drone for the first time, going to become aware of this? Because a lot of people, let's, let's face it, they buy a drone, they don't do any research until they really start getting into it. But you have those you know, flyers that they, they buy the drone, they really don't have any issues, they take off, and they just start flying without doing any sort of research. They may have seen it, you know, they think it's cool, and they just want to start flying. How, how are these people going to know about this test? This is a tough one, quite frankly. Uh, the FA reached out to, you know, the dozens of people that they've selected for a reason. They want us to do the hard work of telling people this is a requirement. I, quite frankly, I wish that there was some kind of information from the drone manufacturers that was somewhere, maybe in the app. It pops up and you say, hey, have you done your trust test? Really that simple, not even right. uh, prevent them from flying, but just basically saying, hey, have you done this? Yep, and then it disappears, you never see it again. No, then maybe it sends you somewhere. Um, I, I hope eventually we can get there. There's no drone manufacturers on the list of test providers. And I was surprised, quite frankly, I really thought one of the big uh, drone manufacturers out there was gonna be applying to do this but but they didn't 
That is sort of weird that they, they wouldn't implement something as simple as, you know, something as simple as just like a pop-up before you start flying or even before you can actually start taking. I don't know if they could legally do that, but um, to make it to where you have to take this exam to before you fly. But I guess, I guess, or at least say, here's the list of providers' websites, yep. at least acknowledge that you clicked on it. So they can do their due diligence, obviously, um, to be able to, uh, you know, let you use the application, whatever the case is. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that are obviously going to have some some form of pushback on this test. Um, is that valid valid pushback, or you think that this is something you know obviously for for new pilots because you're going to have people that are 107. Obviously, 107 pilots. Is this something that they have mm -hmm. to take? Yes, because this it is. okay, so they have to take this exam. So even though I have a 107, I've gone through classes, I've gone through training, done my recurrent, I still have to go through yeah. this and, class. And and you know, it's funny because I said the same thing myself. I'm part 107. Obviously, we teach part 107 at Pilot Institute. But I, I said the same thing when I saw this. Why, why do I have to do this? And if you think about it in the back of it, it, it somewhat makes sense because because there's two sets of regulation. There's part 107 and then there's 44809 for recreational flyers. And there's no crossover. And even better, really, in 44809, there is no... Um, there's no credit for having a part 107. It was never written in the rules. They could have said, if you have your 107, you're exempt from doing this, but they didn't. So from a legal standpoint, you do have to do it because it's a different set of rules uh, that you have to follow to fly recreationally. Now, with that being said, I thought about this because many students ask us, and I don't know that as a part 107, you would ever need to fly for recreational purposes. There, there's no real advantage at this stage. So, uh, you know, if you're part 107, that, yeah, just do it, you know, because it's fun. You know, in the past, if you wanted to fly at night, it was easier to do it as a recreational flyer. And then, and now not anymore with uh, the new part 107 rules. Um, you had another question too. You said, um, pushback, is it valid? Um, I don't think so, because I don't think about it as a test. I think about it as education. And you know what? This is free education from the FA and a lot of us in the industry have been asking about this. Let's make the people that don't know the rules because just because they're oblivious um, know the rules. It's really that simple. So I, I welcome this, quite frankly. I don't want more regulation, um, but but this is, I think, just free training that you can take, get educated. And I'll tell you, uh, we, we've gone through, <laughs> I don't know how many hundreds, if not thousands of comments. Uh, we've been spreading the word quite a bit with Pilot Institute over the last couple of days. And the one thing that, that uh, I get from a lot of people is, I didn't know this. And it, it's just people saying, hey, I had no idea I had to do this. And to me, that's a big win. Once you have somebody that says, well, I didn't know I needed to get a lens request to fly uh, near the airport, that's a big win. Because, because those are the things that are going to hurt the industry down the line. I, I agree. And I, I think that, that you, you said it best is you, they just don't know. And, and honestly, it's, it's that old saying, you don't know what you don't know. And I think that in the drone community as a whole and just this industry, it's just a lack of knowledge from people or a lot of people honestly assume things. And when they assume things, um, that's obviously when it ends up badly for us. Um, and I think the more that we can do to prevent those issues, it's going to be better. Um, you know, I was trying to think to myself as you were talking, I was like, you know, do I take this? I'm like, I do YouTube. So it's like, do I, do I ever really fly just for fun? As soon as it hits the channel, it's monetized. But I think I'm going to take it anyways, just because I'm curious about what we're actually doing. And I think if you're going to go that far as to take the test, and I think you said something that sort of resonated with me. It's like at that point, if you're 107, you're never really flying recreationally. It's you're, you're always flying with motive. So I think, you know, at that point, if you're going to take the time out to study and take the trust test, I think after you take it, you should almost even just consider going for your 107 so you at least have another avenue you can pursue. I mean, you're already halfway there at that point, essentially, if you've done the study and you signed up on the website, you could just go a step further and go for 107. Would that make sense? Would you say that would make sense for people that are possibly been in this for a little bit? I think so. It not only from an education standpoint, but also from um, opportunities. It opens up a lot more things that you can do as a recreational flyer. For example, you want to fly at night in controlled airspace. Well, at the moment, you can't do that as a recreational flyer. You can only do it as a part 107. Obviously, right. you know you want to you want to monetize your content. You never know when somebody is gonna is gonna ask you to go do a job and do things left and right. So it, I think it's a very small investment, especially 
when you look at the fact that the FA removed the requirement for recurrent training. So in the past, you know, you had to take that test every two years. Now it's free, it's online. So right. w- when we talk to customers, we say, hey, you know, you want to self-study? That's fine. You can do that. Absolutely. Uh, the cost is $173 for the exam. If you want to take a course, our course, for example, is 150 bucks. So at the end of the day, you're in for $300 as an investment. An investment that can bring you money, but also make you safe when you fly out there because now you really know the rules in depth. And um, I, I don't know. I, I'm biased, obviously, because this is what oh, we do. But, right. but I but think that's, it's, it that's, makes sense. That's your industry. But I I was once uh, uh, very opposed. I was very opposed to taking the 107. I was like anti get my license. And then once I did it, I was like, all right, well, I actually have leverage in the marketplace because there's so many mm-hmm. photographers and videographers that are unlicensed doing commercial work. Now I'm able to be insured. And I basically, you know, I use that as leverage in in my market and it yeah. works and it really does work. Uh, I'm not saying obviously 107 is right for everybody, but like you said, it's $300 investment. If you're already spending this much money, go a step further, get your license, make it official and just do it, you know, correctly. But then, you know, you go back to this trust exam, which I'm looking over the website now, and it's, I mean, it's very well laid out. It seems really, really super intuitive, um, which I think a lot of people will flock to. Plus too, it's ironic. You use very like catchy colors, like the pinks and purples. (laughs) I'm like, like I can remember this website now because I'm like, ah, it's pink and purple. I I sort of grab, I don't know, I gravitate to those colors, but it's, it's just really super intuitive. So I would encourage, you know, my viewers, if you haven't already taken the trust exam or if you, or the test or, or even the courses or, or know anything about this, and this is news to you, check the links in the description of this video um, and check out the Pilot Institute because it's literally free. It costs nobody any money to do this and, you know, 30 minutes of your time and it may help you decide whether or not going towards a 107 is going to be right for you. Yeah. I think... Um, I think that's pretty good, Greg. How long have you guys been doing this? Because you guys have sort of relatively come up pretty quick in the space. We did. Uh, well, the interesting part is I did this on my own for a while without the Pilot Institute uh, brand. So I okay. started I started teaching the online classes. I was actually on Udemy at first uh, as a as a self producer of courses, and uh, and then we decided to build Pilot Institute because there was I think there was a demand. You know, it's funny when I look back at what the market was before we came on board. I see a lot of people that were teaching just to pass the test, and and my background is flight training. This is what I've done my whole life from. The, on the airplane side and and this was never my motto i never liked to teach just to pass the bare minimum so what i did is i created a, a course that was in depth and that actually taught you more than what you needed to know but to make you proficient and that that kind of became a thing and people really love that angle and we get a lot of positive feedback so uh, we decided to do this so i started teaching in 2016 the part 107 and then uh, uh, um, pilot institute we started in uh, 2019 so no i'm sorry not 2016 i'm I'm mixing up 2018 is when i started on my own okay and then a year year later is when pilot institute became a thing so uh, we're actually going to celebrate our two-year anniversary next month and, uh, and we've been, yeah, thank you. We've been, it's been a heck of a ride, quite frankly. We, uh, I think we've trained, uh, last I checked, it was 25,000 remote pilots uh, to do this. And uh, and the method, quite frankly, it just works. We get awesome results. Uh, 93 average on the, uh, on the exam from our students. And then uh, I think we had seven failures since we started uh, that people reported to us. So um, it's, it, it's awesome. Well, and I, and I think, you know, when, when you talk about the test and you talk about failures, I think honestly, you get in what you, what you, what you, you get out, what you put in essentially. Yes. So if you're taking the time to study, and I know when I was studying for my 107, I basically did it at night and I, I studied for about, I don't know, an hour and a half a night, every single night. And then when I had free time, I would watch, you know, videos and clips and take the practice exam. So but I, but I knew that, hey, I'm paying 150 bucks to take this test. I have to pass it because yeah. I don't want to have to pay it again. And I don't want to have to take the time off of work to go get it again. So if you take the time and understand it, it honestly took me 20 minutes to, to take my exam. And I think I passed with an 85 or or so, which which was fantastic. And then the fact that the FAA sort of loosened the restriction, I, I, I don't mean to use that word like that, but it's they, they sort of did. I mean, they sort of made it a little bit easier on the people who have already taken the exam that, you know, now it's easier to go back. And I think it's fantastic to be honest with what they've done and to be able to do it from the comfort of your home. So if that's one benefit of what this year has done, 
then I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, I think the FA looked at it uh, from different angles. First, they looked at it from the angle of the main aircraft community, where you can renew your pilot certificate by going on the on the FA website on the FASafety.gov. Right. And I think second, they looked at it from if we ask people to pay another hundred and now it's one hundred seventy three dollars. It was one fifty when you and I took it. Yeah, uh, it, it was fifty bucks twenty years ago when I took my first FA exam. <laughs> and uh, but they looked at it as hey, if we ask these people to take the test. Uh, every two years, then a lot of people are not going to do it, which means that they're not going to be up to date on the new regulation. So I think the angle of doing it online for free was motivating for them to make sure people are up to date because this is changing quickly, as you know. Yeah. And that's and that I think that is something that often can, you know, be, a, you know, a detriment to some is like, again, the nickel and diming effect and then having to redo this every two years. I know I was sweating bullets this year because I'm like, how am I going to get down there to do it? And then when they said that you can do it online, I was like, yes, thank you, finally. Yep. Um, but Greg, thanks so much for coming on today, talking about trust. I'm going to have links down below. If you guys want to check out Pilot Institute's courses, I encourage you to check that out. I'm going to be taking the trust test myself, so I understand a little bit more about it. But just beyond that, I think you should check out the website because there's just a wealth of information on the Pilot Institute site that you can browse through. And if you have questions, um, I didn't know who Greg was, you know, for like two months ago, I didn't know who Greg was. And then all, I kept seeing these ads and I'm like, how is this? This is when I was getting ready to do my 107 recurrent. I'm like, how does it know I want to do this? How do you know this? And then we ended up connecting. But um, I see that you're you're really super active in all the different communities and really super helpful answering questions for new pilots. I know it can be challenging and cumbersome to many. So I appreciate what you do um, for the newcomers and for the existing pilots. Well, thank you. And and I do appreciate what you do as well. I watch your show all the time. So um, I appreciate it, man. I, I, I love your videos and uh, you're one one FPV pilot, I can tell you that. I, I look up to you. That's why I want my FPV skills to be one day. So, <laughs> Well, dude, I appreciate it, man. And uh, links are down below. If you want to connect with Greg, where can they find you on social? Uh, social media, you know, YouTube, the YouTube channel we have... Uh, uh, on we're pretty much everywhere, but Facebook. I'm pretty active on Facebook, so okay. I have a I have a student account that I created especially for my students and followers. So you can add me as a friend. Always happy to answer questions. This is what we do, and and I love what I do, quite frankly. So awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it, guys. That's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you already hadn't. Check out the links below for Pilot Institute. I'll see you in the next video. Stay original.